You know guys, it's been about a month since Dima, and I've still got several boxes of Mario's gear to get put out. But you know what? Not today. I'm going to the water. It's time to go dive. What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor, hit that little subscriber button right here and turn on that little bell. That way you'll get notified each and every time we upload a new video and you won't miss out on all the cool stuff that we do here. If you are a subscriber, thank you again for coming back and watching our videos. We truly appreciate each and every one of you. We are back at the Lake Norman Quarry here in Morrisville, North Carolina. This is one of the three quarries owned by the PDRA. If you want some more information on what the PDRA is, check out the link down in the description below. You can find out how you can become a member and have 24-7, 365 day access to one of the three beautiful quarries here. There's a ton of stuff to dive on here. There's sunken airplanes, school buses, plenty of boats and platforms to do training on. And there's just a ton of stuff here. We've got a shallow water section that gets down to about 40 feet. We've got a deep water section that gets down to about 100 feet. And then, like I said, there's just a ton of stuff. Well, what we're doing here today is we're just diving for fun. You know, I've spent a lot of time here recently in our new studio <clears throat> shooting videos for you guys. And I just needed to get out without any students and just dive for fun for me. So I brought a couple buddies with me. We're actually going to concentrate on the back side of the quarry today. They've The two guys I got with me, they've not actually seen some of the stuff over there. So I'm going to take them out. I will be commentating for you guys so that you can understand what we're looking at. Um, the visibility here has actually gotten a lot better here recently. Some friends of mine that do a lot of teaching here said that it's just unbelievable. It's about 40 to 50 foot via. So hopefully it's going to be good for us. I know right here in front of me, it's about 25 foot deep and I can actually see the bottom right now. So that's that's a good sign. We got at least 25 foot, but we're gonna jump in. We're gonna finish getting geared up. We're gonna jump in and hopefully we'll have a good dive and I will give you some final thoughts at the end of this video. All right, so let's get in this dive. Let's see what we can see here. Um, one of the, the, or pretty much the main purpose of this dive was just to get me out of the office for a day or half a day at least and go dive and have fun. You know, one of the biggest things that I see or one of the biggest mistakes that I see dive professionals make, whether you're an instructor, a dive master, or whatnot, is you don't go diving. And I know that sounds crazy because we dive for a living. That's what we do for a job. We're helping students. In my case, I do a lot of salvage work. But even being underwater seven days a week, it is very difficult to find time to go diving for myself. And I, I can't stress this enough. If you're getting into professional scuba, please don't forget where it is that you come from. Please go diving. Um, and don't ever forget why you got into diving. You may start out as a dive professional and go straight from recreational into technical diving and technical diving, say, into some type of commercial diving, and, and then it becomes a job and it becomes a chore for you, and then you, you lose that drive and that passion. Don't let that happen. Get out there and go dive. Um, here we're just, like I said, we're at our local quarry. Got two good friends of mine, and we're just out diving. We're going to see what we can. And now, I think on this dive, we're, we're not doing the main playground like you guys have seen in plenty of our videos. We're actually going to go around to the back side of the quarry. Um, this is actually part of the graveyard here, or what we call the haunted trail. This was put in several years ago by a former quarry manager there. Uh, it's, it's a great little fun attraction to go see. Unfortunately, there's been a lot of stuff taken out. I don't know why. I don't know if it's just been eaten up by fish. I don't know if divers have stole it or whatnot, but uh, there, there used to be plenty of Halloween objects down there, severed heads, arms, things like that. There were these two little vampire babies that were pretty cool to look. They were just like little bobblehead babies, but they had vampire teeth. That's pretty cool. Um, there is a little makeshift graveyard out here that we'll go by. So it's a fun little attraction, especially around the Halloween time, to go see. But, yeah, I, guys, I can't stress this enough. Go dive. If you are a dive professional and you don't dive, there's definitely something wrong with you. Find time to get out and go dive. Here's a little graveyard. Uh, you won't get to see too much of it, but there you can see a little headstone, a little skull. 
Um, it should be coming up on the sea dew here. Yep, so here's the shallow sea dew. We're in roughly 35 foot of water. Um, now, the really cool thing about this sea dew, I make a joke every time I swim by it, there's a skeleton on it. It's a full, full body skeleton here, and it's got a snorkel on it. And I joke with all my dive buddies that the reason it's a skeleton and not a diver is because he's got a snorkel. And you guys understand why if you saw a video on my personal feelings of a snorkel. I think they're great. I think that there is a purpose for them um, if you're snorkeling, not if you're diving. And I've always joked with my students that I prefer the folding snorkels just because I've never been able to get a snorkel to work at 100 feet. And I've never been able to get a snorkel to work at 20 feet. Um, I always get them to work at the surface. So the, really the only time I personally wear a snorkel is when I'm at the surface. So I like a foldable snorkel. I throw it in my pocket when I'm ready for it. I'll pull it out during my safety stop, snap it onto my mask, and then I'll have it when I'm at the surface. Um, but I joke that the reason that's a skeleton and not a diver is because he was wearing a snorkel at uh, 35, 40 feet. Uh, this right here is a relatively new attraction. This is a little moped or a, a little, you know, little dirt bike, motorcycle. Um, it's not been there actually that long. It's pretty cool actually. I'm not sure who put it there. Now I think we're headed over to uh, the vertical boat. I think we're going to actually skip the vertical boat because I'm trying to get over to the sailboat, which is on the back side of the quarry. Yeah. Yeah, so we just completely skipped over the vertical boat. We're actually headed over to the backside sailboat now. We're in about 70 to 75 feet of water. Uh, this sailboat's been here for, for as long as I've been down in the quarry system. And if you're interested in this quarry system, uh, check out the link below. Um, it's for the PDRA or the Piedmont Diving and Rescue Association. It's an absolutely great organization. They own three quarries here in the state of North Carolina. And you do have to be a member. It is a membership and own quarry. But once you become a member, you actually become part owner in two other quarries. So there's three that you'll have 24-7 access to uh, 365 days a year. They're all gated off, so you'll have a key to the gate. You can camp on them, you can hike on them, you can scuba dive and swim on them. Now, there are certain rules that you'll have to abide by, but it's yours. Once you become a member, you become part owner in it. Um, so it's a lot of fun. We do a lot of camping at these quarries as well. Yeah, visibility is actually pretty good for us today, too. Now, typically speaking, you can see the entire length of the sailboat. I want to say this is probably a 26 or a 28 footer. So we've got at least 28, let's say just 30 foot of this here. Uh, I do want to talk real briefly about this one because there's two sailboats in this quarry. This particular one, the cabin area is a lot wider and a lot deeper than what the other sailboat is, so you can penetrate it. I will caution you though, without some type of advanced rec training, cabin training, or even cave training, I probably wouldn't actually go in this one. Now I'm actually in side mount um, and could easily fit down in there in side mount. But it is going to be a little bit difficult for me to get turned around. And with the two guys that are with me that are not, say, cave, cabin, or even advanced rec uh, certified, I chose not to go inside this one. Um, but yeah, you, you can definitely penetrate this one. I, I wouldn't really call this a swim through because the only exit point is your entry point as well. So you're going to have to be able to either turn or back pin your way out. And, and to be honest, in this one, if you did penetrate, I would probably leave your fins out of the cabin so you can back in because trying to get turned around in there if you're a larger gentleman, or in my case, I, like I said, I was in side mount, um, it's kind of difficult to get turned around. Even though it's a lot wider than the other subo, there's really no other exit point for you. Uh, here I'm just telling the guys that we're going to head over into another direction. Now we're actually trying to find the statues here, and I, I overshot them just by a few feet, so we're just going to kind of skip over that. Um, here we're headed over to the school bus. Now the school bus is about 40 foot of water. Great for recreational uh, divers. Um, now on this particular school bus, uh, there's plenty of entry and exit points. And I know I just talked about not penetrating something unless you're certified in it. Uh, this is one of those uh, exceptions here. And there's a lot of times that we have what's called swim throughs. Swim throughs are very, very short distance. Um, and there's plenty of entries and exit points. Uh, not really any entanglement hazards. This particular uh, school bus has a huge opening in the top, so you can go into it probably about, uh, let's say, 10 feet and pop straight out the top, or you can go the entire length of the school bus, pop out the uh, door there on the passenger side, 
Or of course, you can do what I'm doing here. I'm actually swimming all the way through and I'm gonna pop out the windshield. Uh, plenty of room, no entanglements. Now there is a little bit of silt build up in here, so you can still have a sealed out, but in this particular quarry, it's very, very unlikely that that's gonna happen. Um, there you can see the, the doors just standing wide open. Big open exit points here. I'm just coming straight out through the, uh, the windshield of the bus. This is probably one of my favorite attractions. Not my favorite, but one of my favorite. Here I'm gonna pop out, turn around, check on my dive buddies. They followed me right through. You can even see, I didn't really touch the bottom, but you can still see how it kind of sets out a little bit. There he came out the door. That's Mr. Michael there coming out. And I think Chuck's gonna pop out the top. Let's see where he's at here. Yep, he did pop out the top. There we was just pointing at him, checking on him. I'm going to swim over here. Now, the cool thing about the school bus now, there is an extra attraction here that's been added within the last year or so. It's pretty cool. This this is a, our fourth dive buddy. He wasn't actually with us during the beginning of the dive, but he's come in here at the end of it. Uh, this is Mr. I'm a Sinker. He's been here for probably about a year now. And it's a cool little mannequin. You, you know, if you come up out of the bus or if you come in from one, side and all of a sudden you see him. That's our local quarry mannequin, not the quarry manager, the quarry mannequin. I got him put in there. It's pretty cool. And I'm not sure what kind of tank he's got. Is that steel or aluminum or a milk jug? Kind of looks like a milk jug. Actually, I think it's a Clorox bottle. So maybe that's why he's still down there. If he was breathing Clorox instead of air or nitrox, We'll give a little shout out to Sinker Swim Scuba. That's another dive shop that's probably about 50 or 60 miles from us. Old Brent, if you're watching, man, give you a quick shout out. Go check his shop out. All right, I think we are headed over to the car now. There's actually several different vehicles here in the quarry. There's plenty of boats and stuff to dive on, but there's a Volkswagen car you guys have seen out in plenty of our videos. There's actually another Volkswagen car that's in the deeper part of the quarry, around 80 or 90 feet. Um, it's actually been crushed. You can't really swim through it. The first one you can, the second one you can't. Then there's the Shots Fired card, which is a Ford Escape. It was used in the TV show Shots Fired that was produced by Fox. Um, and that particular show was actually filmed in the city where this quarry is in the north of North Carolina. And they filmed a scene at our quarry where they ran the car off. I'll actually link that video for you to go check out too because that was pretty cool to see it in production, how they, uh, it was basically a suicide scene where this guy drove his vehicle off into the waterway and then drowned. Well, this is where it was filmed at and my car is still underwater. Now it's actually been moved to a little bit better place so that you can explore it without any type of um, endangerment. But, I'll link that video for you so you can go watch it as well. And I think, yeah, we're fixing to come up on the other car here. This is the uh, other vehicle that's there. Now this one, you can't really penetrate or anything. It's just kind of demolished. A lot of rusted metal there. Uh, if you're in a dry suit, definitely don't penetrate this one because you're just gonna rip it all to shreds. But it's pretty cool to see. It does create a pretty good sized fish habitat. Now we're in the middle of the winter here. Yeah, we, we didn't really see that many fish today, but usually in the summertime, that thing is just loaded down with, uh, with brim and perch and bass. There you can see the roof is just kind of collapsed down. I think we're coming closer to the end of the dive here. Um, it's been shortened down for you guys here on YouTube, but this total dive was about 30 minutes for us. Um, and I'll try to do an aerial real quick for you to show you where we started, where we ended. Um, but we, we kind of went around the back side of the wall there instead of just going straight across the quarry. Um, if you're diving in aluminum mating, my two guys here, they went down from about 3,000 PSI um, down to just below 1,000. So they're going to end their dive around 800 or 900. I'm actually in side mount. I got 280s and I've only used a third of my tank pressure. So for me, it would just be my turn time here. Um, and we fluctuated on depth. We started around 20 feet and we got down to 40 feet then 70 feet. We came back up to 40 feet. Now we're in about 15, 20 feet here. We're actually doing our safety stop here in the last part. Now the cool thing about the quarry is when you do safety stops, you don't actually have to stop, um, you know, three feet at 15 minutes or, or three minutes and 15 feet. 
you can actually do your safety stop during the last part of the swim because the shallow areas is about 15 feet. So that's what we're just doing there. And then here's the backside shed. And we should be getting to the end of the video here. But yeah, absolutely fun dive. I really needed to get out of the office and this dive did it for me. All right, guys, so we just got out of the water, got changed out. As you can see, we're back here on the back side of the quarry now. We started over there. That's the entry point, and we worked that wall all the way around to our back side. Now, typically, if we're going to be diving the back side, we're just going to come over here. We'd come over here. We'd unload. You can see where the truck's parked. we got a nice little shed to change in. So it's a nice little place to gear it up. The reason we didn't, though, is because our intentions were, were to come around the wall see what we wanted to see and then kind of go back to the wall well we didn't quite do a good enough dive plan as you can see i was inside mount had plenty of air these guys were on single ladies and unfortunately they didn't have enough air to actually make it all the way so we did have a contingency plan that contingency plan was to come out here at the back side so worked out good for us either way but we had a nice little dive i hope you guys enjoyed coming along with us if you did drop me a comment down below let me know what you guys think about diving in the winter and diving in a quarry like this guys i really appreciate you coming on this journey with us if you did like it smash that like button for me definitely share it as well as always make sure you follow us on instagram and twitter like us on facebook pin us on pinterest subscribe to us here on youtube and as always guys we appreciate your business